Driving around earlier today, we didn't see a lot of property damage from recent storms, but I can tell you every time clouds roll in overhead, people here grow more concerned. So we have seen an officer stop by this location to check out the structure behind us, and there's a good reason for that. You can actually see the fire that was part of this building start back up. Be more aware of their surroundings, and that includes not wearing headphones. Coach Fox is known to sling up cliches like a bartender slings drinks, and today some fans got a serving of some. Let's uh, turn your attention right over this way. You can hopefully see in the background area the helicopter that's buzzing the Chicago River. I want to walk over here now to show you some of the most severe damage that we have seen. A tree in the background blocking off any cars from coming in. Fortunately, there are no injuries to report about this evening, but the U.S. Coast Guard tells us they will be shutting down a portion of the river below from around now until at least 9 tomorrow morning. That's so crews can tend to the barge below. It is partially submerged, and workers are trying to determine why. For a few hours, the flow of traffic near the Lake Street Bridge pulled over. There's dozens, dozens. It wasn't for police, it was for what was seen down below. Yeah, somebody's getting fired for that for sure. A barge once hosting clay from a construction project began to sink. People nearby heard a loud boom. It started sinking, saw bubbles, just bubbles, 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 and it was sinking. You guys basically have been eating lunch watching the barge go down? Pretty much, yeah. Chris Morano and his friends had a view of the vessel. It is described as almost as long as a football field and as wide as a city street. The barge slowly took on water as it may have taken on a battle with physics and lost. I would say the dirt was most focused, like, in the middle. It cracked right in the center and started sinking. Maybe they just put too much weight in one bad spot. Clark Construction tells us that they are investigating. The Coast Guard says the company has hired people to remove clay from inside, and after that, the barge should be light enough to push to the side of the river. No timetable on what an investigation into a cause will be complete. If moving into a house is a fluid process, consider this unpacking. <sighs> My son's clothes. One step toward feeling at home for Kristen Skinderi, husband yeah. Ozzy, and 14-month-old <laughs> baby Nixon. His Santa outfit. <laughs> All are temporarily staying at Kristen's mom's in Des Plaines. It's not nap time yet, buddy. It is their first no. weekend back after a frightening no. journey beginning with what doctors told them was a death sentence. They said, enjoy your son because he will probably not live past the age of three. About nine months ago, the family learned Nixon had Gaucher's disease. That's when the body lacks an enzyme leading to organ damage. It can be as fatal as it is rare. He's like one of 12 in the world. But rather than move towards mourning, over the past several months, the couple moved from place to place to save their son. We went to a children's hospital in Cincinnati, Ohio. We lived in Loyola. The only real places we visited were hospitals. We lived in Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. There, doctors performed an umbilical cord stem cell transplant. The process included chemotherapy, killing the disease, but also Nixon's ability to fight off infection. The transplant offered a way to rebuild what Gaucher's and treatment destroyed. <laughs> That's my guy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> it also rebuilt a family's sense of hope. There's nothing showing that he has Gaucher's disease anymore. The next move they hope to make is even further away from a deadly disease. So surreal to be back here in Chicago. The skin dairies are not calling this a cure. Because of the rarity of Nixon's case, doctors aren't sure what his future holds. What they have said, his life expectancy is now greater than age three. His parents hoping to be part of it for much, much longer than that. We downloaded a free noise measuring application. Out here, the noise outside, my voice picks up at anywhere between 60 to 70 decibels. When planes fly overhead, that increases to somewhere between 90 to 100 decibels. It is by no means a true scientific measure, but the difference is keeping neighbors up at night. We live a beautiful life here. But some in Itasca say that's only possible with the volume turned off. It's louder than the tr loudest train you could hear. It sounds like an air show. It's more like it's just continuous. The mayor's mother, Nancy Prine, kept a list. 250, 10, 252. She recalls hearing a plane's flight path from O'Hare about every two minutes. It was never as bad as it is right now. You cannot sit outside on the front of your house, in the back of your house, and have a conversation. Here, look at, look at, look at where that is. 
This week, the FAA declined a request to hold additional hearings, saying their initial evaluation, including noise assessment, was comprehensive, but adds they are reevaluating a portion of the airport buildout because one runway is being constructed in a different order than first anticipated. Lawmakers like Congressman Mike Quigley are working. To pressure the FAA to hold hearings, uh, to alternate the use of runways in the short term. That could mean less air traffic overhead, less noise overheard. Having a hard time talking on the phone. Now you can't even watch TV. Even with the windows closed, it's difficult. The somber sign outside Wrigley paid tribute to Mr. Cobb. In the shadow of the stadium, you can easily spot baseball's influence. That was my first hero when I was a kid. But at Sheffield and Addison, it's much harder to spot a smile. I'm going to miss him. Against a fence rests a growing memorial to 83-year-old Ernie Banks. So when you lose your first hero, it's, it's tough. This is how Cesar Gonzalez reflects on his fallen friend, a man he wrote a book report about in second grade and played golf with as an adult. I actually had checked out some library books about Ernie Banks. He asked me to do that so that his wife could get to know him because his wife didn't know much about his playing days. Gonzalez believes Banks was simply too modest to tell her about his days on the diamond firsthand. He's irreplaceable, really. Well, fans might have preferred putting flowers next to Banks' statue. That is just not available because of construction in this area. Instead, they settled on a place next to his name, keeping the player close in their hearts. I'm happy he's honored like this. Take me out to the ball He'll be up there singing with them. For now, those voices and those fans find comfort near a fence. And a friend's goodbye includes touching the name that touched so many lives for so many years in and well outside of Wrigley. Jeremy Ross, CBS 2 News. I lost my job at the end of 2012. Uh, in the final moments of busy holiday shopping, it is possible to miss Brian and his dog Blue. Oh, big boy, there you go. Like many others panhandling, they rely on the kindness of strangers. Thank you very much, God bless you. Thank you very much, God bless you. And as night begins to close out the season of sales and shopping, ho, ho, ho. Richard McNeil and his sister are bringing a last minute shopping to those less fortunate. What's up, boss man? You need anything? He gives out food and water. You got it? Yeah. Good. For those asking for help, there is clothing. I've got some pants. His bag is full of his own clothes and others yeah, donated yeah. by friends. He has used his own cash to buy strangers food. Need a sandwich, some water. What he asks for in return. Take my hand, boss. Costs only a smile and a greeting. Give me some. Bless you, man. If you asked why he's spending his own money and time outside when so many are inside a shopping store. Just hit me like, why not be a blessing before Christmas? Holiday inspiration unwrapped and delivered on the streets of Chicago. So many times we have our hands out instead of giving someone something. The brother and sister tell me that they asked for donations through social media and they plan to do the exact same thing tomorrow. Live in the Loop, Jeremy Ross, CBS 2 News.